Hello, it is Wednesday, April 13th, 2022. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It's a Wednesday puzzle, so perhaps we'll have a bit of a step up in difficulty from yesterday, or maybe we'll just match yesterday's difficulty, as I did find that a little bit tricky for a Tuesday puzzle. This edition of The Daily Solve has been brought to us by Henrik Koskinen, as well as, I believe, a returning benefactor, David Connell. So welcome back, David Connell, to the ranks of the benefactors. And, of course, as always, the inestimable Hood Monster and the invaluable Timothy Mark. So thank you so much to all four of them, benefactors of the Daily Solve Patreon campaign, for contributing to this uh, channel and making this series a sustainable part of my daily work. I very much appreciate that, as I appreciate everybody who has backed the Patreon campaign at any level. So if you'd like to do that, you can get access to all of the bonus video solves that have gone up on the uh, Patreon feed to date, as well as the new ones that go up each week. And if you become a benefactor, you also get the Daily Solve Let's Check the Crosses mug. Uh, as well as this um, recognition in the videos. And also, at any level, you get the extra channel in the Daily Solve Discord chat server, the rest of which is free for anybody to join. So you can join the Discord chat server or browse the Patreon campaign in the links in the description field underneath the video. And that's that, I suppose. Do subscribe to the channel if you are uh, if you enjoy these, this series. We're actually already closing in on... Um, 6,000 subscribers, which is very exciting. That might happen in the next week or so. Uh, so thank you, everybody, for who has subscribed. All right, let's get on to today's puzzle. This is, as I said, a Wednesday puzzle. It was constructed by Rebecca Goldstein, who um, I recognize that name. She's done a small handful of puzzles for The New York Times, not a debut, um, but just a, just a few, I think. And it was edited, as always, by Will Shorts. And I can see there are some... <laughs> There's some circles, some circled cells in the grid, and they're tantalizingly disposed in this diagonal pattern. So I'm curious to see what that's about. Uh, something thematic, surely. So let's go. Let's play. Ah, oh, interesting. It has some kind of pattern being illustrated here. I don't know what that's meant to suggest, but I, I bet we'll have a better idea by the end of the puzzle. So let's go. Ending with walk or run. Walkway or runway, perhaps? Cutter. Oh, and Cutter is in, it's in um, italics. So this will be something thematic. Interesting. And it doesn't intersect. Oh, I was going to say it doesn't intersect with the circles, but it does in the sense that it cuts through them. So this says Cutter, and it's it's sort of splitting these two. It's, if if not for this, if this cell were circled, I mean, it would, it would, create an unbroken line, diagonal line segment. Okay, interesting. I don't know what that means yet, though. So I'm going to keep moving through the puzzle. Oh, this is a funny pair of clues. I don't think this is thematic. I think this is just a funny little flourish. So one down is, that's good thinking. So that's good in quotation marks. Two down is, that's good thinking. So the whole thing is somebody saying, that's good thinking. Whereas number one is the thought process of thinking that's good, perhaps. I don't know what it is. I don't even know if way is correct, actually. Poppable muscle, informally. Poppable muscle, what does that mean? And scorpion's stinger, a tail? There may be a more specific term for that, I'm sure there is. Apt rhyme for chop and crop. Okay, well, it could be lop, as in lop something off, chop it off, or crop, crop hair, lop off your hair. Uh, so maybe a scorpion's stinger is indeed its tail. And what about this? Don't worry. Could be it's okay, maybe. Artist who said, a line is a dot that went for a walk. It's very cute and pithy, but who is it? I don't know. Um, Luz and festival in Arabic. I should probably... It's not E, is it? The A of AQI. Well, it will start with A. Air, air quality index, actually, I think this is, now that I look at it. I think that's air quality index. So maybe this is Eid. And artist who said, a line is a dot that went for a walk. I probably shouldn't fill this in until I'm certain. 
something heard secondhand. And there's a question mark. So something is, um, we're, we're doing something punny or as a bit of wordplay. And I suspect secondhand will be, will be that. Is it something signed? As in you heard it with your hand, sign language maybe? I'm not sure. What about this? One to tip. A waiter maybe? The problem with this kind of clue, and it says one to tip, is I don't know if it is referring to a waiter or something that tips over. Be and I suspect, <laughs> I suspect it's whichever one the crossword constructor or editor felt was less obvious, but I never know which one to consider more obvious and therefore which one is the, the cleverer way to do it. I'm not really sure. Here we have breading for tonkatsu, uh, panko. So that's sort of a Japanese uh, breaded cutlet. So panko breadcrumbs, I think, would be used in that case. And candy once marketed as a smoking cessation aid. I think Pez, that um, little sh sort of chalky sugar candy that comes out of those dispensers with heads fashioned like film characters and that sort of thing. Hardly strict could be lax. And to bring stress or agitation to could be to vex. So you could vex somebody, bring them stress or agitation. A big tub would be a vat. You could have a, a big tub of water, I guess. That was not a very interesting example. Uh, South American capital with the world's largest, longest urban gondola. Is it La Paz? It's my suspicion. Based on the crosses primarily, to be honest with you. And rush could be ASAP, as soon as possible. Rush, do it quickly. Zero out. Reset. You could reset somebody. You could, sorry, not, not somebody. That sounds ominous. You could reset something, a piece of software. You could zero it out or scale, actually, I guess would be the more accurate example. Perseus's horse. Boy, I'm not sure I remember the name of Perseus's horse. I hope I can get it with crosses, but I don't think I'm going to get it with just those two letters. Bit of metadata. So this could be something... Metadata is sort of supplementary information that might be part of a file, a computer file, like a photograph might have metadata about the camera that captured the image or the place it was captured or the date on which it was captured, that sort of thing. Could be, uh, this could be, a, there's so many different things a piece of metadata could be depending on what it's being applied to. Coverer, ah, okay, here, look at this. So coverer, whatever word is a synonym for cover or, or whatever the answer to this clue is, it covers these four circled cells. So here we have the cutter that cuts through this diagonal line. Here we have the coverer that is sort of a lid on top of them. What about this one? This is not one. What about this? Breaker. Yes. So this breaks. Oh, right. So it's almost as though it, you could almost imagine these, this sort of V-shape having been horizontal and then someone breaking through it, like chopping up a, a piece of wood, and, you know, martial arts lesson or something like that. Breaker. And awe and tay for two. What are those? Well, there are two of them, so it will end with an S, presumably. Cookie-flavored cereal. <laughs> I wonder if this is Oreo O's. Look at this utter disaster of a, of a piece of crossword fail here. It looks like Oreos. What a nightmare. I wonder if that's the answer. This is a way around the, um, the restriction on using Oreo with simple clues. I think I've mentioned, but Oreo has so frequently been used as an answer in the New York Times crossword that now in order to use it, crossword constructors must provide a completely new, previously unused clue for Oreo. But uh, Oreo O's, if this is indeed the answer, which it may not be, but if it is, uh, clearly does not yet, has not yet reached that stage because cookie flavored cereal is about as uh, vanilla, speaking of flavorings, a, um, a definition as you could get. Anyway, exude irrepressibly. It could be ooze. You oozed stamina. You exuded it irrepressibly. To go for is to opt for a fictional, oops, that's funny. I accidentally typed that O 
but I think it's the correct letter because fictional character partially inspired by Mexican folklore, I suspect, is Zorro. And to provide digital approval. Well, it's probably not E-OK, I'm guessing. E-R-S-V-P, maybe? I don't think that really counts as approval. Experts are pros. Polo of the Fosters. Never seen the Fosters, but Terry Polo sounds like somebody and looks like a fitting name here. Provide digital apparel. E sign uh, Approval, sorry. E-sign. You could e-sign a document. All right. So how do I feel about this in the pantheon of E-words? I don't know. I mean, I guess I've seen e-sign before. I'm not crazy about it. I think I would prefer, I think I'd prefer the crossword simply not use things like this because I don't think any normal person uses these words ever, but it's not as bad as e-tail. I mean, I know e-tail sometimes, e-tail meaning electronic retail. I know that sometimes gets used in the business press, I guess, but anyway, already could be so soon. And exhibited could be shown. You've exhibited characteristics. You've shown them. So what is this? Oh, oh, oh. oh. Are these locks? I bet that's what these are. Yes. Tay. Tay does sound like, like a body of water in Scotland. I bet that's what this is. So breaker... What is this? Sorry, why do I not see what this is? And here we have adds to the team, so to speak. Something's on, hires on, maybe. You could bring somebody on to the team at work or on a, I don't know, sports team, I guess, hire them on. Grape group. Could it be Syrah? Is that a, that's a category of wine grape, right? Is that what that getting at? There's so many different ways to spell this. Parasite actor Wu Shik. I saw that movie, but I don't remember the actor's names, unfortunately. Mother of Pearl. I don't know. I'm not very confident about Syrah here. Popular Japanese brew. Asahi is a Japanese beer, so that may be what this is looking for. Rotten. And something heard secondhand. Boy, I'm not... Not very confident about this whole area up here. Oh, Ikea department. Ikea department. Office, kitchen, bedroom, living room. What are the various... Is that what it means by department? I'm not sure. Sort of storage solutions, furniture, what? Hmm. Sorry if this is incredibly obvious. It probably is to people who have been to Ikea more recently than I have. Less soaked could be drier. So breaker. Oh, oh, is this going to be rock, paper, scissors? It is. It is. So the rock breaks the scissors. Ah, why didn't I see this? Okay. So here we have S-C-I-S-S-O-R-S. -S -S oh, this is very clever. So we have rock breaking scissors. So way is, in, is incorrect. After all of that, look at that. My very first entry in the grid was completely wrong. So here we have paper, and paper is being cut by the scissors. Oh, and waiter is also incorrect. Boy, it's a good thing I saw this theme. This was really shaping up to be a poor, pretty poor um, bit of grid fill on my part. And then here we're going to have the paper, which covers, covers, rock, although actually I'm not sure which how we're going to fill this in. So dessert wine is port, or port is an example of a dessert wine. So R-O, there we go, we'll fill it this way, R-O-C-K. Geico spokes lizard, I guess the Geico gecko, yeah, okay. All right, very clever, look at that, wow, and I, it really eluded me for quite some time. This breaker being rock, <laughs> so confusing, um, because obviously breaker and rock are, in, they're in no way synonyms. They're, they, Breaker only defines rock when you understand that the theme of the puzzle is rock, paper, scissors. So here's a theme. I've you know, brought this up a few times recently. We've had a number of themes that can be fully, whose grid can be fully completed without ever having to had to, without ever having to unpack the theme to sort of solve its mechanic. In this case, I think you 
it's pretty reasonable to say you do basically need, I mean, obviously any crossword, you could simply get all, get the answers you don't know through crosses. But if you want to actually understand these clues and fill them in based on the clues, the cutter, breaker, and cover, you do actually need to understand that the theme surrounds the game of rock, paper, scissors. That's a very clever, that's a good idea and very well, well implemented, I think. So anyway, Mother of Pearl Naker, there we go. So that's the the material that um, it's referred to as Mother of Pearl. And I guess lends its, I guess then lend, Mother of Pearl also is used to describe a color taken from that material that, uh, uh, from the, from, it's a sea uh, derived from the ocean. I can't speak today, apparently. <laughs> Grape group, what is this? I don't know. And here we have Rotten, and here we have Ikea Department. Here we have Lose. And likely answer to who wants ice cream. Why do I not, why do I not understand anything over here? What is likely answer to who wants ice cream? Yes, what does that mean? I'm sorry, I'm completely blanking. I have no idea what's what that's meant to be. Uh, that's good thinking. Ah, optimism, there we go. Um, oh, I spelled scissors wrong. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Ah, I spelled scissor with an extra S. Oof, singular scissor. Too many S's. So who wants ice cream? I do, there we go. Boy, that was, this has not been, not been my finest hour, I would say. Lose could be misplaced. You could lose an object, misplace it. Oh, see, what am I, I'm just relentlessly mistyping things here. Oh, Paul Clay must have said a line is a dot that went for a walk. So Clay, K-L-E-E. That would be, this could be a tough cross. Well, maybe, well, so I was going to say, so here's Ede. So Clay and Ede could be a tough cross. But what's funny about this puzzle is you actually have three crosses, because if you figured out the theme, you could then infer this cell to be E based on its presence in paper. So yeah, l let me know, let me know how, how you all fared with these in terms of some of these crosses, <laughs> which of the three possible crosses you used to get some of these answers. One to tip, so not a waiter, but a server, so a synonym. So on the right track, but I had the wrong word. And that's good thinking. Not sure. What about this? Walk or run? Walk ons or run ons? There we go. You could have a run on sentence or a walk on, I don't know, role in a film, I guess. Uh, that's good thinking. Neat idea. And then poppable muscle informally peck. Oh, I, is that, I didn't really know that was called popping. Is it when people sort of activate their pectoral muscle, I guess, to make it kind of flex, I suppose. Okay. Grape group. What is that? rotten and something heard second hand oh a used cd there we go a used cd so that's a slightly dated reference i guess at this point i used to spend quite a lot of my time in my teenage years in record stores browsing used cds parasite actor wushik um still not sure grapefruit is it punch is it a fruit drink i don't really see how that matches, so probably not. Grape group. Ikea department. Oh, decor? Is that a department at Ikea? Maybe. Rotten. Bad, I guess. It's gone bad. Oh, a bunch of grapes. Yeah, okay. I was really focused on this being, um, I don't know, I guess a category of grape. I, I don't know why, but I just was really focused on that. So important not to let yourself get really stuck into one sense of a word. It's really an absolute killer on the crossword. So anyway, Parasite actor Wushik. Uh, this must be Choi Wushik or Wushik Choi. And then one to tip. Oh, so we had this, quite a bit of this going on in this puzzle. I like this. So we had one to tip is a server. And then here one to tip is a valet or a valet. And then here we had that's good. That's good thinking. And then here we had that's good thinking. And I think we had maybe one more of those actually. I can't remember. Okay. Blank large. 
something could, a drama could be writ large, told on an epic scale or scope. One name for the game depicted in this puzzle. So one name is Rock, Paper, Scissors, and one name is Rochambeau. So there we go. We have a nice extra bit of thematic content in the grid. Like Rome starting in the first century BC, Imperial Rome, and Promo. Promo. Here we have nuclear codes. And there's a question mark, so some kind of pun or wordplay. Is it going to end with an S? Promo, I'm not sure. What about this? Therein lies the rub. And there's an exclamation point. So, I mean, I suppose this is vaguely a sort of reference, paraphrasing reference to Hamlet, but I don't think that's relevant to solving it. I think that's just a little bit of fun. But the, the exclamation point means this isn't going to be a phrase that means therein lies the rub. It's going to be saying about the answer therein lies the rub. So the rub can be found in in the answer that we put. But I'm not seeing it. I wonder if, if Imperial or, or Rochambeau is incorrect. Let's check some more crosses and see if I can disprove any of these, these letters. Wet weather wear could be galoshes. So rain, sort of rubber rain boots. Portion. Commander in Arabic could be Amir. Now, you could spell this Amir or Amir. Those are both valid variant spellings of Amir, so I'm not sure which it is. Uh, but here we have never, nevertheless blank persisted. Nevertheless, she persisted. So here we have Amir with an E. Uh, obviously, from which we derive Emirate. And promo. Here we have, is that what you said? Question mark. And so we are doing a bit, this... A lot of very clever cluing going on in this crossword. So just, and not in a sense of being brutal. I mean, there, there have been some difficult things in this puzzle, but the, the cleverness of the cluing itself is not necessarily tied to the difficulty. It's just sort of nice have, having fun with the conventions of crossword clue construction. Because here, the question mark indicates a bit of a pun or wordplay, but it's also actually creating a question. Uh, it's literally serving as a question mark and creating a question. So is that what you said? Anyway, ba, because you here refers to uh, a female sheep. So a sheep says ba. Is that what you said? Ba. If something is stale, it's old. And a portion is a shard or a share would be more accurate. Yeah, your fair share, your fair portion. Ah, so promo is a teaser ad. Okay, this was all correct. Ah, so therein lies the rub is spa. That was my first thought. Why is that true? Oh, because you could get a back rub. You could get a massage or a rub, that sort of thing. I see. So therein lies the rub. In a spa, there is a rub. <laughs> it's a strange way to say it. Nuclear code. Is this... My first thought when I saw this was genome, but it doesn't really seem correct. So what am I missing? Nuclear codes. Moose alternative. Maybe it's genome. Moose alternative is gel. Big wigs may have big ones. Egos. Okay, it is genome. Someone has to explain to me why that's... Oh, nuclear, because this isn't referring to nuclear in the sense of radioactive, but rather nuclear in the sense of atomic, uh, I suppose. A nucleus of, a, of an atom, that sort of thing. Someone, someone tell me why this is... Um, well... So I think I understand why it's relevant, but somebody do a better job of explaining it than, than I am right now in a comment. That would be very useful. Thank you in advance. To plead for something is to beg for it. And a carnival hype man is a barker, a carnival barker, you might say. Good name for a black cat with white feet, socks, sort of describing the pattern on its feet. 1990s TV nerd would be Steve Urkel, the um, classical sitcom nerd, I guess. American television. And if one is foxy, one is sly. Part of a child's bedtime ritual would be a story, telling them a story. And, oh, Perseus's horse was Pegasus. Boy, not not great for getting that one. It's very, as far as horses go, that would be a famous one. Uh, bit of metadata. Oh, so some sort of tag. Okay, I mean, that's 
that's appropriate. Often metadata, often metadata is referred to as tags. You could say, I'll tag this with the date. And what you're saying is I'm going to add a bit of metadata with the, the relevant date to this post or photo or whatever. Actress Margot of Bombshell. I don't think I saw that or know what it is actually, maybe even, but it, I'm guessing it's Margot Robbie. Bombshell, what is that? Not sure. Might have seen a trailer. Might have seen a teaser ad. Okay, poets, spheres, and orb. Orb. All this means is that orb is a sort of a more poetic way to refer to a sphere. Often planets will be referred to as orbs poetically. Case of emergency. And here's a question mark, so some kind of pun or wordplay. So some kind of... So it could be a case meaning a physical case in which emergency supplies are kept? A go bag, maybe? So I wasn't expecting that to be the answer, but as I was saying it, I sort of talked myself into it. So that could be the answer. Go bag, something that you have packed in case you need to, uh, I don't know, flee very on, on very short notice. The other thing I was going to say is it could be a case meaning a, a court case. So there could be something, some emergency term in that context, but maybe it is go bag. So, oh yeah, a bit of, bit of metadata is a geotag. So yeah, sort of related to, I guess, geocaching, which is that thing that people do where they don't actually know what's involved in this. It's something to do with going to a physical location and your phone knows you're there and you get something, you get a prize maybe, I'm not sure. But I think that's a, I think that's a thing and you could describe a geotag as a bit of metadata. All right, if something is, I was going to say if something is clear, but no, I think this might be clear as a verb, so too clear to erase, to... Um, Zero out, wherever that was earlier in the clue. Reset, I guess it was. I don't know where it was. It was somewhere. Word with sitter or steps, babysitter or baby steps, and Himalayan ox would be a yak. And let's just look at the crosses before we finish off the puzzle. Mount Fuji setting is Asia. Fair enough, Mount Fuji is in Asia. And an uber enthusiast is a geek, like Urkel, who you could describe as a geek. And there it is. There is the crossword for Wednesday and a very fun theme. So this was a case where percentage wise saw the theme relatively early in the solve was able to fill in. It's one of those themes where once you do know how it works, you can essentially just go right in and fill it out. It's not as though each instance of the theme clues and answers have some unique pun that needs to be solved unto itself. Once you've once you've figured out what's going in, you can shoot ahead and fill out the whole thing. And I suppose that's one of the ways in which a Wednesday theme would be distinct to a Thursday theme. Tomorrow on tomorrow in tomorrow's theme we're going to expect something a bit more demanding. Uh, but in the first half of the week, the theme might be something like this where you can just go ahead and fill it right in after you've filled it out. And that is a fun thing to do. And I know people in the comments do tend to like when I do it. So here we had paper being cut by scissors. We had scissors being broken by rock. And finally, we had rock being covered by paper. And all of that makes up the possible actions in the game Rochambeau or rock, paper, scissors, which was indicated in, I would don't know if I'd even call this a revealer per se. The revealer would typically be the explanatory clue and answer that ties together all of the rest of the thematic material in the in the puzzle. But in this case, I think this is less a revealer and more uh, more just one more part of the puzzle. I don't know. I suppose it's a gray area. It doesn't it doesn't necessarily explain what's going on. It just ties into what is already going on. Anyway, uh, that was that. I thought a really nice really nice theme and a nice puzzle and again gave me a bit of trouble from time to time. I'm actually quite thankful for, this is, I suppose, one of the reasons uh, themeless puzzles are, generally speaking, considered more difficult than theme puzzles, because you, you don't have this extra access to help you solve. I mean, obviously, there are times, especially on Thursday, when a theme can make a puzzle much more difficult. But on, on the Monday to Wednesday, and probably Sunday as well, themes often give you one extra way to help solve. You know, here I had those basically extra bits of fill, extra, bit of, extra crosses, essentially, the third, the the third cross, the mystical my, mythical third cross in a crossword, um, and so that it it did help help out a little bit and make uh, key me into some clue me into some 
mistypes I had, I guess, throughout the puzzle, or in some cases, mistypes, and in some cases, actually just completely incorrect answers. Anyway, that was that. I hope you enjoyed it. Let's discuss, let's discuss a few clues from yesterday's puzzle. Um, I think I have three here. So Perla says, I'm Italian and I confirm uh, in un ristorante means in a restaurant. I'm sure that was just a nightmare of pronunciation. I think that in French, you should use dans, D-A-N-S, and not in, well, in, I-N. So you're right. Of course. Well, you, <laughs> this was Italian for several reasons, including the spelling of restaurant being the Italian translation rather than the French translation. But the reason I didn't read, the reason I read I-N as in rather than Italian for in, the reason I read it as an English word is because often in the New York Times crossword, when you get a couple of words in another language, they'll start the sentence in English. They'll say something like hanging out with your ami, for instance, and then ami would be A-M-I for friend in French. And so it'll start in English and then they'll just drop in the bit of common vocabulary in the other language because they're not uh, trying to, you know, they're, they're giving you a bit of a, a help with with the foreign language. And so in this case, I just assumed in, the reason I assumed the whole thing, there was a French related clue. It's not because um, I mistranslated in in French. It's because I just assumed that was, that was the English bit of the clue. So, uh, but what I then noticed eventually was uh, ristorante would, is Italian and not French. So anyway, thank you for uh, your Italian confirmation and explanation there. And I'm very deeply sorry for what, uh, what a complete imbecile I must sound like when I pronounce these languages. Okay. Raven Sim says, you were right about your bowling terminology. Spare is, a spare is all pins down in two throws, whereas a split is the pins left in two groups that are separated by a gap and hard to hit in a single throw. So thank you for confirming that. It took me, it took me a bit of circuitous, uh, I don't know, revision of, <laughs> I think an initial misstatement in order to arrive at that. But eventually I got to the correct bowling terminology and throws. Good to see somebody who seems to know what this, what this all is say it is a throw. So good. I'll try and remember that. And finally, ZOR95, regarding the speed of light referenced in the puzzle, the speed of light is 299,792,458 uh, meters per second exactly, by definition. In the relatively recent past, there's been an effort to define the standard un units of measurement in terms of fundamental physical properties of the universe, and the definition of a meter is how far light travels in, <laughs> in one out of 299,792,458 seconds. Although this does require the second to be defined, and that is far more complicated to explain, yes, I can imagine it would be, it's to do, it's, uh, it's to do this the frequency of light associated with transitions between specific cesium-133 atomic energy levels. Wow. Okay, so uh, that was by ZOR95. If you'd like to reread that, uh, you can head over to the comments on yesterday's uh, puzzle. But thank you for that interesting that interesting definition. I suppose it makes sense that we'd want our standard units of measurement defined by physical, fundamental physical properties of the universe to give them some kind of um, immutability, I guess. Yeah, that's interesting. Okay, and that's that for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll be back tomorrow for that Thursday puzzle, perhaps that trickier theme as I speculated earlier in this video. And I hope you enjoyed this one. Um, and that's that, I suppose. I already, I already encouraged you to subscribe to the channel, so I don't know that there's much else to say. I guess I'm also on Twitter. I haven't mentioned that in months, possibly. Uh, Twitter.com slash Daily Solve uh, is where I am there. Anyway, that's the, I think it's Daily Solve. Is it Daily Solve or The Daily Solve? I should probably check. It is The Daily Solve. Sorry, it's good that I checked. So um, Twitter.com slash The Daily Solve if you'd like to follow this channel on Twitter. Anyway, I'll be back tomorrow for the... Um, Thursday puzzle. I hope you join me. But until that point, please do have an excellent remainder of your Wednesday. Take care. Mm -hmm.